Hello and good day, Mike Adcock with an update on Typhoon Haiyan in the Western Pacific. This brief is based on the 9 Zulu JMA advisory package from the 6th of November 2013. Alright, taking a look at Typhoon Haiyan, also being called Yolanda in the Philippines uh, right now at 9 Zulu, uh, was positioned about 225 kilometers south-southwest of Yap or about 285 kilometers east of Palau. It is continuing to move off to the west at 16 knots. Uh, winds, a little bit of a discrepancy here. Uh, JMA is reporting 90 knots gusting to 130. Um, on the other hand, JTWC is reporting 135 knots gusting to 165. Now, inherently, there will be a discrepancy with that. Uh, the Japanese follow the WMO standard or the World Meteorological Standard of a, of a 10 minute um, average. Whereas the uh, US Navy's JTWC uses a one minute average. That usually equates to the JTWC uh, number being about 14% stronger. Um, that still doesn't take the case. Honestly, I'll, I'm going to go along with the JTWC personally. I, although the 90 knots is from the official agency, um, just taking a look at the Dvorak analysis and all that stuff, uh, JTWC I think is a little closer in terms of the intensity. Again, they're reporting 135 gusting to 165. Uh, pressure, again, another discrepancy there. JMA is reporting one, uh, 940 hectopascal whereas JTWC is going with 922. Um, what we're seeing on satellite though pretty much tells a story. Uh, very rapid intensification that we've seen today as it continues to track to the south there of Yap. Uh, very small pinhole eye uh, reported about eight nautical miles in diameter. It's becoming more uh, symmetric. Do have a very uh, small yet intense convective core with this system and very good in outflow. You see that especially on the western side there. That's being enhanced by a tut off to the northeast. And it's going to continue to move off to the west as it tracks along the southern periphery of the subtropical ridge. I was mentioning Dvorak earlier. Um, up at the top there is the JMA uh, data. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what happened. I pulled up the 6Z data this is what it showed. That doesn't even come close, so I'm throwing that out altogether. Uh, NESDIS and JTWC both on point, in my opinion. Both going with a final T of 7.0. That matches, or that is from the data T. What they did there uh, with this system, you take see there on the uh, side there, uh, this enhancement, infrared enhancement. Well, they're taking a look at the eye temperature, which is an off-white color. Um, compare that to the uh, surrounding, which is that cold medium gray, that gets you a 6.5 on the Dvorak scale. Um, for th There's an, another eye adjustment that's uh, added on from there, adds another half, so that gets you a 7.0. Both agencies going with that. That does con break constraints, and you see that here, Nesdis, uh, a 24 hour change of two and a half. Usually you'd see about a change of one per day. So two and a half, uh, JTWC is looking at uh, even three over the past 24 hours. And the uh, advanced Dvorak technique, the objective uh, program there, 6.5, a little on the conservative side, but still 6.5 gets you about 127 knots or about 937 hectopascal for pressure. All right, taking a look at the wide shot here, um, kind of give you a lay of what's going on here. Obviously, to the south here, is Typhoon Haiyan. Continuing off to the west there, you do see the uh, Tropical Depression, Croso, making landfall there in uh, southern Vietnam. Off to the north, this is what's steering Haiyan right now. Very, very strong area of high pressure off to the east of Japan. About 126, uh, give or take, hectopascal pressure there. Uh, to the south, you can see a the trailing edge of a, a shear line extending from a cold front that's uh, south of Alaska and you can see that on the JMA analysis here there's that strong cold front uh, cuts off but there is that shear line that extends around the southern periphery of this high very strong area of high pressure and that's just acting as a blocking mechanism keeping uh, Haiyan moving off to the west and that matches up with the forecast from JMA 
Um, this is from 6Z, uh, pretty similar on 9Z track for whatever reason. Didn't get the, the 9Z image up here. But um, again, just, uh, just to the north of Palau, that doesn't mean that uh, while the strongest side is going to be on the northern side usually, doesn't mean that uh, Palau is going to be out of the woods. Still going to be a very strong system as it goes through there. Uh, and then by Friday, this system is going to be affecting the Visaya Islands right now looking. And pretty much all the models are in agreement here looking for impacts, significant impacts for Samar and Lete. Uh, expect for a very powerful typhoon to roll through there. This is going to be affecting all of the size, so uh, portions of Cebu, um, Negros, uh, in the western Visayas, Bicol region, uh, Mindoro. Uh, all these locations will, actually even northern uh, uh, Palawan is going to be dealing with this system as it rolls through over the, over the uh, end of this week. And pretty much looking at all the uh, nearby agencies, here's Taiwan's uh, official track. Very similar. Looking for a landfall there. Again, southern Samar, northern Lete, and then cutting across the Visayas there. Here's uh, China's uh, China Meteorological Agency or Administration's uh, track. Again, making landfall there and around Samar. Uh, for Hong Kong Observatory, another landfall there for Samar. So that whole, uh, the whole eastern Visayas is under the threat for a significant typhoon. Uh, KMA, again there on the Lete Samar border. And I really, really wish I could pull up Pagasa. Uh, actually, rather disappointed. I normally don't get a whole lot of, I don't get very vocal about this, but um, not very, haven't been very pleased with Pagasa in terms of warning on this system. This is a very powerful system. Um, since it's not in the uh, Pagasa area of responsibility, haven't seen any warnings until today. They finally posted a track on Yolanda. Um, of course, as soon as they do that, uh, Pagasa's website has crashed. So, uh, and I've noticed if you, you know, looking at media across the Philippines, GMA, ABS-CBN, um, you know, they've been utilizing sources such as AccuWeather, JTWC, JMA, all over the board. So, uh, rather embarrassing, honestly. But, again, looking for impact uh, there, again, in the eastern Visayas. It's going to be tracking through um, throughout the Visayas as well as Bicol and Mindoro. And that pretty much matches up with the JTWC track there. Um, one thing of note, as it approaches, and, and this is kind of more on the intensification side, I mean, you're right now, again, looking at the JTWC forecast, uh, current analysis 135 knots, your borderline category 5, this is a super typhoon, it's forecast to become a full-blown category 5, 145 knots. Um, once you get a storm this in strong, especially with an 8 nautical mile eye, uh, Right now, eyewall replacement cycles is going to dictate how things go in terms of intensification. So we can see fluctuations. Uh, it's very possible that this system is going to undergo one of these eyewall uh, re uh, replacement cycles. Um, some short-term weakening, but with that, an expanding eye and possibly an expanding wind radii. So that could affect more of Luzon. Uh, as this system moves uh, forward. So, of course, everybody in the Visayas and uh, really the southern half of Luzon, uh, to include Metro Manila, definitely need to monitor the progress of this storm. And actually, uh, northern parts of Mindanao, you're not out of the woods on this as uh, either, so definitely continue to monitor this system. Uh, again, though, in the near term, Further intensification, of course, a lot of that's going to be dictated by the replace, uh, eyewall replacement cycles. Uh, as it crosses the size, it should see some weakening. Still going to be a major typhoon, though, once it reemerges in the South China Sea. Um, after that, you're looking at some marginal sea surface temperatures, going to be battling a little bit of increasing shear. So uh, not a whole lot of intensification may see some weakening, but again, looking at a typhoon to make landfall there in central Vietnam. So uh, that will be affecting lots of people in that area as well. 
pretty good agreement for the tra uh, for the model tracks, and you saw that with the uh, the various agencies as well. Again, major threat for the uh, uh, Visayas as well as long term for Central Vietnam. Uh, in terms of intensity, again, a lot of fluctuation in the near term. Should see some weakening as it crosses the Philippines, and then. Uh, slow weakening as it traverses the uh, South China Sea. All right, taking a look at the upper air pattern. Uh, upper levels, again, great outflow a lot. That's really helping to air out this system. Um, and again, not a whole lot's going to move that. It's going to continue moving it in a west to northwest fashion. Uh, low levels, you can see that strong area of high pressure off to the north. Here's that shear line. Uh, strong winds with that, but that's keeping this um, pretty much cut off at about 25 degrees. South of there, easterlies, and this is going to continue to push Hainan, or Haiyan, rather, off to the west. Shear, not much to talk about. There's a little bit of shear right now just east of the Philippines, but that's not really going to be much of a player once, uh, once Haiyan makes it out there. Uh, really the only threat will be once it gets closer to Vietnam uh, a little more uh, in terms of shear to deal with there. Alright so of course we've been talking about the winds. Rain is also going to be a factor. Heavy heavy rainfall for portions of the Visayas as well as landslides, flash flooding, the works. Right now looking at uh, 150 to 250 uh, millimeters of rain throughout um, Lete, parts of Samar. This also includes Cebu, no, uh, Northern Negros, out towards Iloilo. So definitely keep an eye on this. This this chart, what you're seeing here, is a total accumulation of rainfall through um, Saturday morning at about 8 a.m. Philippine time. You can see here also uh, rainfall totals as high as about 300 uh, millimeters or so there in southern Leyte, so definitely going to be of concern. Of course, this is affecting uh, Metro Cebu, Ilo Ilo, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, definitely continue to monitor the progress of this system. Right now, though, again, it's it's a couple hundred kilometers south of uh, Yap, a uh, couple hundred kilometers to the east of Palau. So not seeing a whole lot on the surface plots. Still some gusty winds up toward Yap, and you can see that uh, at the Nine Zulu surface observation from Yap International. Easterly winds there gusting to 24. Did have a gust earlier than the hour up to 42. Um, 14 kilometers in light rain showers out there. Uh, overcast skies. Um, yeah, just a lot of thunderstorms in and around the area. Uh, improving conditions of wind. Uh, starting to get some um, pressure starting to rise out there as the typhoon moves off. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, uh, rainfall, three hourly rainfall, uh, 84 hundredths of an inch. Um, one thing I did want to pass on, this is from the National Weather Service in Guam, uh, do have some typhoon uh, updates. Uh, typhoon watch for Yap has been canceled uh, as of 8 p.m. Uh, Guam time or uh, nine Zulu, um, and that's just with the typhoon being far enough west. The typhoon force winds are not affecting the islands. A, a typhoon warning still remains in effect for Nagulu uh, in Yap Island, as well as Kiango and Okoro in the Republic of Palau. Uh, those areas will seek typhoon conditions, including destructive winds of 75 miles per hour or more, uh, within the next six to 12 hours. Tropical storm warning also remains in effect for Yap Island, uh, and with that, um, con of course, continue to monitor uh, your local meteorological agencies for Palau and Yap. Continue to monitor the National Weather Service in Guam. Of course, folks in uh, Visayas continue to monitor Bagasa and uh, other um, sources. So, just continue. This is going to be a, a very uh, very dangerous threat over the next few days so uh, make sure that all your uh, evacuation plans are in order if need be that you're uh, prepared for this storm and uh, you know definitely heed any advice that comes down from local authorities uh, that concludes the update though today 
on Typhoon Haiyan. Of course, you can get this and other uh, analysis over at westernpacificweather.com. Uh, you can also follow along on Twitter and Facebook. And you can join in on the conversation at storm2k.org. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Have a great day. Uh, please be safe and take care.